morning. I have a couple of announcements to make. I invite you all to our first United Methodist Church of West Chicago's online worship service. We have people from Facebook and hello to all. You can wave your from there. Also, we have people on Zoom right here um, with me too. So if you need uh, people who are watching us uh, uh, from Facebook, if you need the Zoom information, please send us the message so that you can be part of a Zoom worship service on Sunday morning too. So let us begin as we uh, find ways to see peace that God um, invites us into this table of grace. I have a couple of announcements to make, and that is um, if you have any prayer requests, please send us uh, via um, email. We go umcucc at gmail.com, or you can call us at 630-231-3344, or you can contact me so that we may uh, send out all your prayers uh, and we'll pray together. Let's not walk alone. I also have another uh, announcement about the Christmas Eve. Uh, Christmas Eve services will be uh, uh, pre-recorded this year virtually at 9 uh, p.m. Um, on Christmas Eve on December 24th. And 1 o'clock will be our Zoom uh, you know, carol singing. So I invite you uh, to that too. Now let's take a moment in Christ and invoke the Holy Spirit as Ron Banner leads us into our prelude. <laughs> And a call to worship, it's going to be from David Morsey. We can see it on the screen. Please join me in the call to worship. John the Baptist said, prepare the way. So family of faith, how do we prepare our minds for worship? We silence the inner critic. We let go of busy thoughts. We make space for God to speak. How do we prepare our hearts for worship? We bless all emotions. We feel what we feel. We open ourselves up to be moved. 
How do we prepare our bodies for worship? We take in the scent, sight, and feel of this space. We breathe in God's mercy. We exhale God's love. How do we prepare our souls for worship? We bring our full selves into this space. We wear our hearts on our sleeves. We trust that even now, God is here. Family of faith, what we practice in worship, we must live out in our daily lives. So prepare the way. Let us worship holy God. Amen. Now it's time for us to light the candle of peace. And Michael Horsley is going to lead us into that. Advent candle lighting, the candle of peace. I dream of the first pitch of opening season. I dream of a laundry day where each sock finds its mate. I dream of family home for the holidays. I dream of good books and homemade meals. I dream of sunset drives with the windows down. These are beautiful dreams, but I also have urgent dreams. I dream of conversations across party lines. I dream of more bridges and less walls. I dream of more laughter and less fear. I dream of more listening and less tears. But most of all, I dream of peace like a river. Today, we light the candle of peace. May it remind us that there is another way. Amen. Now please join me in our opening prayer, which is from Brian Hendricks. Please join me in the opening prayer. God of peace, we must admit there are a million things on our minds. We would like to be as focused as John the Baptist, preparing the way, gathering the crowd, spreading the word of your arrival. Maybe then we'd know peace. However, more often than not, we are a swirling compilation of grocery lists text messages, emails, and over-reference to-do lists. So today, we ask for your help in preparing the way. Could you start with our ears, and then maybe move to our hearts? We'd like to hear you more clearly. Maybe then we'll know peace. Gratefully we pray. Amen. Amen. And our opening hymn is People Look East. And we have many people who are going to sing together, so let's see. I think it's Nina Chesum. Uh, and Andrew Wood. Thank you. 
And now please join me in affirmation of faith from David Morrissey. Please join me in the affirmation of faith. Prepare the way of the Lord, and so we worship virtually. We march towards justice. We roll up our sleeves. We plant trees for our children. We make art. We choose hope. We gather at the table. We sing loudly with joy. We share stories and wisdom. We celebrate children. We fall together. We rise together. We love together. We do all these things because we believe that God loves us so much that God, show, God shows up here. So we prepare and prepare for that next beautiful day. May it be so. Amen. And our children's message from Patty Nelson. Peace. Peace to you, children of God. Today is the second Sunday in Advent. Last week we lit the candle of hope and talked about the excited expectation of what we know will happen, the coming of Christ. When I was a child, I grew up where there were, was lots of snow, as much as 12 inches in one day. I was amazed to realize that snow is very quiet. Now when it rains, we can hear it falling, even inside the house. But when it snows, it is silent. You can't tell it is happening unless you are watching it. I could sit and watch the snow fall and fall and fall and never hear it. And then when everything is covered in snow like a blanket of white, everything else gets quiet too. It is amazing that something so silent can change everything so completely. Our candle for the second Sunday in Advent is the candle of peace. We prepare ourselves for Christmas by having peace. Like snow, peace comes quietly. We do not hear it, and yet when there is peace, it changes everything, making the world get quiet and look so beautiful. Our Bible story tells us today that we need to wait quietly for God with peace. John the Baptist tells us to prepare the way of the Lord. We can help prepare by being peacemakers. Now we are bursting with hope and changed with peace as we prepare ourselves for the joyful mystery of Christmas. We carry an excited hope wrapped in a beautiful blanket of quiet peace, thinking of the song, Away in the Manger. Be near me, Lord Jesus. I ask you to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with you there. Let's get ready for Jesus coming by being peacemakers, helping and saying kind words to all people. And let's get our hearts ready for peace by talking to God in prayer. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, we light the candles of hope and peace on this second Sunday in Advent to remind ourselves that we must prepare with a quiet peace as peacemakers for the coming of the Christ child, your son Jesus. Help us to bring hope and peace to everyone we meet. In Jesus' name, Amen. Peace. Peace. <clears throat> so, let us share our joys and concerns. Let us share where we find peace and where we do not find peace. Are there any prayers that we want to lift up? Those who are watching us on Facebook can tell us, uh, comment us. And those on our Zoom can unmute themselves and can uh, uh, tell us their um, prayer request. I have a prayer request. 
um, a very dear friend, high school friend of mine, um, died of COVID, and mm -hmm. I would like to pray for his family. His name was John Helm. Prayer for John, who, uh, who went with God uh, because of COVID. I have um, two things I'd like to just say quickly. Thank you for the beautiful service last night. Um, it was cold outside, but I felt like my heart was very warm mm -hmm. from the service. And I also want to pray for our healthcare workers that are uh, working so hard in the hospitals and clinics that um, their strength and their hope can be sustained so they can help others. Yes, mm -hmm. prayers for healthcare workers and a uh, wonderful blue Christmas. I think we should have prayers for the families of all of the uh, people that we've lost from our congregation this year. Um, where we had uh, six uh, active people that were that we lost, beginning yes. with Joan Howard and, and uh, most recently Bird Andrews. And I'm sure that all of their families are um, <coughs> having a tough time yes. uh, with this first Christmas without their loved ones. Yes, 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 prayers I'd like, for all. I'd like to ask for prayers for Cindy Janice, who is in her final stages of life right now. Cindy Janice, prayers Cindy for Janice. her. Yes. Okay, if are there any others that we need to uh, lift up? We do know that we continue to uh, pray for the vaccine, which is coming. Uh, it's just like, uh, you know, like an incarnate Jesus who's bringing the good news, right? I guess um, we should pray for how it is be, uh, will be distributed at the same time for the people. We're going to decide on things that they will uh, give them the wisdom where uh, God leads them in uh, uh, wherever God uh, leads them and um, also uh, we are going to continue prayers uh, for those who are sick um, and who needs co uh, comfort in the times especially like this in Christmas when we do not see our loved ones around the table and yes we need to continue to lift them up uh, this especially this year Okay, let's take a moment in Christ. Uh, those things that we do not share in public, we do know who listens. So we'll take that to our God and then I'll lead you in pastoral prayer. Lord, our scripture today we are going to listen is from Isaiah which says, Comfort, comfort my people yeah. and Lord you are the one who said that and you gave that words to Isaiah and Lord today we come on this second day of Advent <clears throat> where peace is a long distance where do not see peace anywhere where do our hearts are divided, our hearts are aching and in the midst of all those chaos and all these uncertainty, fear, we hear your voice through your son Jesus Christ, whom we prepare the way to meet you again visit to Bethlehem this year and so Lord we want to hear again and again your words of comfort your words of peace we want to listen we want to understand above all we want to live out the way that you that was shown by your son Jesus Christ and so Lord we are here virtually worshiping you but with your spirit connected with each other we lift all the prayers that are lifted up 
be prayers for those who are who needs your comfort we pray for those who needs your healing touch we pray for those who needs your power of healing that they may become an instrument of your healing on people's life lord we also pray for eradication of the covid we also pray for the vaccine which is coming and lord we ask that or ordain that vaccine so that that may become a stream of your healing and we can witness your love through it and lord we pray for this worship service we are thankful that behind the scenes we have adam jones who is leading us into this worship service we are thankful for dave marcy and all the the people who are here who are helping us out that lord we ask that this worship service even though we are not meeting physically in this space may become meaningful because you give us a tools to connect and through the holy spirit that we may be continue to connect and see peace and love and joy and hope in especially during this time so we dedicate ourselves and as we partake the table that your son came to share, let it be that we may share it with others too, that we may be graced by your presence in our homes, wherever we are worshiping. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven give us this day of our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever amen Let us hear another song from Lena Ranian, John Down by the Jordan. scripture reading comes from Isaiah 40. Let us listen. The Old Testament reading for today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. This reading is from the New International Version, and the, and the passage is about comfort for God's people. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground will be made level, and rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. 
The grass withers and the flowers fall. Because the breath of the Lord blows on them, surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. And thus ends the reading of the Lord. to wait for your return. Come back, Lord Jesus, and do not be slow. Or help us in the lingering to learn your saving way that savors love and so refine, renew, restore. We hope, we yearn. Come back, Lord Jesus, and do not be slow. Refine, renew, restore. We hope, we yearn. Let us pray. Yes, Lord, come back and do not be slow because we do yearn for your peace, for your hope, for your love. Speak to us wherever we are. Connect us with, your, with you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, um, when I had uh, John the Baptist, uh, when I first heard about him, when I was very little, I was shocked to hear that that's the person that God chose, you know, to prepare the way. Like, I was like, well, who, who wears a camel clothes, you know? Who wears a, who even eats bugs? Wow, but my son, the younger one, used to eat bugs, but not only bugs, you know, not only bugs, yuck, 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 you remember that song? <laughs> John the Baptist eats bugs, yuck, 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 and he eats bugs, yuck, yuck, yuck. I remember that because my sons used to sing that so many times. You know, today's um, a scripture reading, actually, both from Isaiah and also from Matthew, uh, talks about the wilderness. John the Baptist preparing the way of the Lord. They are, these are, are like um, major uh, images in today's uh, gospel reading and also uh, from the Old Testament. And there are three signposts for our Advent journey too. There are three windows in our hearts. Wilderness, John the Baptist, and prepare the way of the Lord. Last Sunday was the first Sunday of Advent and last week we heard about the um, about the sun being darkened, uh, the moon no longer giving its light, stars falling from the sky and the powers of the heaven being shaken. And we find our dreams among this darkness a hope Today, we will talk about peace. Today's scripture reading uh, challenges us 
Isaiah brings with the plea from God, comfort God's people and ends with the promise of one who will lead gently to God, towards God. The Mark passage starts with the promise of preparing the way and ends with the deeper promise of baptism with the Holy Spirit. Do you remember your baptism? Do you remember? I do know that I was very little to really be known. Like, you know, most of the baptism we remember from our, you know, pictures, I guess. You know, we see old Uncle, Uncle John, Uncle Mary, Aunt, or whatever, who have hold of you, or you must have seen, um, might not seen the really water because you know those times there was no technology really showing the water sprinkling but I have a picture of mine and um, and that the moment you see that picture it changes the way we look at that time we smile <laughs> we feel ourselves with God and even at that time when we are watching that uh, picture holding that picture of our baptism. Think about it. When we must have received the baptism, things would have been totally different, don't you think? These things speak to what might bring us peace. The moment we think about baptism, we think peace. And we find peace in this pandemic. The direction to comfort God's people is given to the prophet. And I suspect most people here these uh, familiar lines as a plea for God to comfort God's own people yet it is left to prophet to do the comforting this isn't the typical role of a prophet let me tell you usually a prophet is discomforting <laughs> the people of God doesn't like to really see the prophet coming at that time because he would come and say, you know, repent, the God is on the way. You know, repent and do this. They have this charge of things that they talk about. Um, but this is unusual. Today, uh, actually, in Isaiah, usually, Isaiah talks about the, uh, you know, tell, tells about the future, which is discomforting. And this time, yet here, Prophet Isaiah is offering hope and the visions of peace for God's people. Out in the wilderness, there is a voice crying out, telling the people to get busy making way for God. And who is listening? Who hears the, re the reminder that only God is forever and better days are ahead. I wonder what comfort Isaiah offered to God's people at that mo moment. And are we called to do the same as this in this moment, in this pandemic, in this unrest, in this chaos, in this uncertainty, in this crack opened, you know, light that we see? And we are called to do the same at this moment too. As a people, those who dream of God's peace should offer God to, should offer comfort to God's people too. Reminding them that pandemics, not just pandemic, but pandemics will not be forever. And the future God holds for us is filled with peace and promise. What might that look like then? It, if we take seriously the idea that God claims all people as God's own beloved, then should we as a body of Christ, as a church, be embodying the comfort for all people in all the times? In the midst of the wilderness of today, what does God's highway look like? How do we travel in, the, in this way? What can we do to unfold our neighbors in God's promise of peace? Mark gives us an idea of what this might look like. John 
was out there in wilderness preparing for the arrival of the Christ. John cried out for the people to repent and acknowledging where we have a broken relationship with God, with our neighbors, with ourselves, with our, with our creation is the place where peace begins. Mother Teresa's, uh, you know, um, wonderful quote is where uh, the smile is when the peace begins. The moment you smile, that's where the peace begins. And I guess that's what it is. To participate and look at that person and say, I give you peace through Jesus Christ. Repentance then can raise the valleys and lower the mountains and put us all on equal footing before God. Naming the aspect of our lives in which we have gotten far from God's holy ways opens up to the possibilities of forgiveness and beginning again. These are appropriate activities for the beginning of the Christian year that is Advent for any time at any moment. How often has sickness, grief, loss, fear, anxiety, isolation, and other similar feelings put distance between God's peace and us. We cannot bring comfort to others if we are lost in our own despair. These passages remind us that God's love for God's people never ends and is with us even now. God did not send COVID-19 to test our faith, though our faith may be tested again and again. God did not send COVID-19 to punish humanity for our sins, though we may feel as if we are being punished. God did not send COVID-19, however, God is in our right side in our pains. He comforts us. He knows what it's like to human, to be human because he came here as human, even though divine. No matter how pandemic obscures our view, God is present. God's love is not withdrawn from us. This is a good news. This is a promise that will comfort all God's people. And this is how I think this is how um, we can repent and know that we are forgiven. God wants us all to live on the highway that excludes no one. That highway that brings us through the wilderness and to the barren places into the deeper uh, relationship with our neighbors and with God to become messengers of God. You know, this past week we decorated our sanctuary. I'm so thankful for Judy Hosley and also Gigi who helped out, uh, you know, decorating. And it's really good to see decorations, especially when there is no one you are here, right? It's just uh, being our only media people here and myself. But while we were decorating and doing stuff like that, and I, in the night I had to come back again. I, I forgot something as usual, you know, we do that. And I, ca I came back and it was dark. And right there was an activity by, you know, our sign uh, where outside. And then I saw this uh, candles, you know, that leads in the night. Um, and I saw those things, it just gives us joy, you know, you don't need to go too far. We do know that in COVID, we don't want to go to come closer to each other. But only coming to close physically is not necessary to comfort people. Signs of love, signs of telling and calling and letting them know, I pray, I care, is what the peace comes. And that is what actually John was saying. John was saying to us, come and be there because there is a bigger light coming than me. This baptism that I am doing is nothing in front of the spirit who is, whom he is going to come. So why? 
why we just sit here and not, you know, wait on that God who is the promised Messiah. I hope that this time that you may really remember again your baptism. And when you, I, I invite you to go back to your, you know, uh, photos, your old baptism photos of yourself, your grandkids, or, you know, your children, and open that thing. Look at those people, maybe not there now, but look at those people and see. I am pretty sure the moment you look at it, you will smile. The joy fills the room. But above all, you will find the peace that in Christ we are born again. And we are grateful because of God, Jesus Christ, coming here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, let's um, hear another song, uh, Make Way, Make Way. Wherever you are worshiping, I know that there are some who are via Zoom who have uh, who can bring their uh, juice or bread to your table. The Lord be with you and also, and also with, you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord of a God. It is right to give of a thanks and praise. Holy and right it is, and of a joyful duty to give you thanks. O oh God, for in the beginning you dreamed of a world that would be good of mountains, valleys, and oceans, of the changing of the seasons, of the laughter and the magic of music, of the creation united with you in love. You dream of this world, of God, and you formed it into being. And when we who bear you image in this world turn away from you, you did not turn from us, rather in love. You held fast to your dream, working, shaping, and suffering to make it reality. And so we praise you with the faithful of every time and place. We are going to sing this. <laughs>
prophets dream of the day when you would tear the heavens and come down and in Christ their dreams became reality. Come down now, we pray. Upon this bread and the cup, make them to be for us the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Who at supper with his disciples took the bread. So it's a time for you to lift up your communion cup wherever you are or your bread who are watching us from our Facebook live. And gave thanks and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup and gave it to them, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So great is the mystery of faith. upon your people that we too may dream your dream of the lion lying down with the lamb of justice rolling like a river of swords beaten into plowshares of prisoners set free may we dream your dream and then as we make as we wake empower us with your spirit and work to make your dream reality form us with your dream everlasting god we pray and all say amen, amen. the bread of life be the light in your darkness christ, christ is the light of the world the cup of salvation be strength for our journey Christ is the hope of the world. The gift of God for the people of God. Let us come for all things are now ready. Now let us sing a communion song. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. And all people will see the salvation of our God. So as you go from here, remember that God is God who promise and realize our dreams. God who wants us to live fully. God who wants us to really receive his peace. God who says that this COVID-19 is nothing in front of this babe that I am sending. Receive Christ today. Receive my son because he is who is going to bring peace, joy, hope, and salvation. So go from this place and become the instrument of his peace. In the name of Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.